How's it going, everybody? This is Josh, KI6NAZ. Today we are looking at the Ameritron AL811H, an 800-watt amp that is uh, really small-sized, really easy to move around at about 17 pounds. I've had a lot of fun with this amp, and I'm going to talk to you about it and do a little bit of a demonstration. You're in Arizona, right? PSL? So walking you through some of the specs, the 811H is again an 800 watt amp on single sideband, 600 watts on CW. It does everything from 160 meters down to 15 meters. It will also do 12 and 10 meters with a user modification. I'm told it's by opening a panel on the back and snipping a wire. And everything on this radio feels really nice. It has Spartan knobs that feel really good. And I gotta tell you right up front, I love these knobs. They feel really, really good to move. Um, for tactical hams or tactile hams, this is gonna be a pretty nice knob. The 811H runs off of 110 from the factory, meaning that you can plug it just about into any shack and you don't really require a drop for 220. You can set this up for 220, although it's not needed right out of the box. One note, I am running all my equipment on the same circuit that this amp is on. I use this during the ARRL sweepstakes and I never had any kind of power issues. A note on heat dissipation. The unit right now has a big wide space between the shelf uh, mount points and about six inches or more in the front and even more in the back. The manual recommends about two inches of space, no less than the back of this unit. Now running this all day, all night and putting my hand uh, right here on the side of it, it, it's not any warmer when in full operation than it is in this ambient temperature. So it doesn't warm up my shack or warm up my desk, and the noise that it puts off is relatively low, which is nice, because you're not having something buzzing in the background when you're trying to operate. So let's give this amp the good, the bad, and the wood I buy it, the ham radio crash course style. The good, it weighs 17 pounds, it runs on 110, and it puts out 800 watts on single sideband. Those are all great things for an amp. It's very easy to install and set up, it has an ALC connection for those of you that have the capability of a radio that, that can do ALC and what that allows it is basically if the transmitter ever puts out too much power, it allows the amp to fold back and not damage the tubes or any of the internal circuitry. By the way, again, this amp is running four 811 tubes, which you can buy, they're available, they're still produced, and so that just makes us something that will last longer. Although there are people, if you go on eham.com and look at reviews, there are people that have been running this amp for years and years and years, and it continues to work for them perfectly. This thing is very highly rated on eham, which you know some of the folks can be salty out there, a little bit salty, and it still lasts up and, and basically maintains its rating very well. It's been on the market for a long time, and it's still a performer. So what are the downsides? Well, the downside is that it doesn't do full legal limit at the same platform cost and, uh, and everything else it's got going on for it. Uh, realistically though, there's not a lot downside to this. One of the downsides could be that it is about $1,000 if you were looking online for one. The Ameritron website sells it for $1,200, but they even say, go see your local dealer for you know their pricing. And at their pricing, it's about $1,000 if you go to Ham Radio Outlet. So it's moderately well-priced for an amp that puts out 800 watts. Again, 800 watts is kind of considered a sweet spot with a lot of hams. I was able to make a contact to New Zealand uh, a couple of nights ago on 40 meters. New, New Zealand's not that far from me in comparison to a lot of the rest of you in the States. I know you're further away, but I got an S9 signal report from that station. I heard him great, but he heard me even better. So would I buy it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, this amp is mine. I'm keeping it. It's not going anywhere. It's staying with me. And yeah, I, I absolutely like this thing a lot and I would recommend it. And I want to be, I want to be, I want to be really clear when I say this. Uh, I'm not giving up any of my love of QRP. I love QRP radios. You guys know I've made a lot of videos on QRP and a lot of videos with my 100 watt. 
ICOM 7300. Now, I want to talk about the graduation of power and the mental effects therein. I love the challenge of QRP. I love doing a soda activation. I love hiking to the top of a mountain and then using my five watt radio or 10 watts if I'm running the KX2 to get really long distance communication. There's some energy, some calories dumped, burning to get to the top of that summit to make those pretty sweet contacts at a low noise floor. I also like using my 100 watts, uh, just ICOM 7300. Works fine most of the time, but there are situations where you're not able to get out as far as you'd like. You're receiving further than you're making it to the station that you're listening to. And it'd be great if you could just punch through and get through to that contact. This is most evident to me when I'm working contest. And it was the California CUSO party this year, 2019, when that was the most <laughs> evident. And that's kind of what led me down to this amp. This amp, highly recommended by uh, some of my friends, Connor being one of them. Thank you, Connor. And as I said, the reviews on eham.com are really, really great for this amp. So I am a big supporter of kind of graduating your approach to radio. QRP is great. It's a bit of a struggle. 100 watts is also good. Lots of fun. A little challenging in some situations. And then there's the convenience and the nicety of just being able to flip a switch with a 17-pound amp and being able to put 800 watts of power uh, down your wire into your antenna. That is uh, something that until you experience it, it's kind of hard to explain. If you have a friend that has an amp, uh, go sit down and work some contacts in their station. You will, I think, be surprised, particularly if you have it in your home, in your shack, how easy it is to just, I'm going to go work the radio now, turn that baby on, tune it up, and then you're off to the races and running. There is something I will mention before we wrap this up. There is a tuning process to this. And basically, because this is a tube device, you need to set the plate and then set your grid, your load, if you will, to the appropriate power output. And I use an SWR meter that's capable of handling the power output. I guess that's a 3000 watt uh, SWR power meter. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna use something like CW, something with a constant carrier, AM, you know, uh, RIDI, whatever. And you're gonna key up and you're gonna adjust the load, the plate and the load as you gradually increase the power of your transmitting radio until you find the sweet spot, the power that you want to get out without running into the red on any of these meters. That's all there is to it. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So something you're going to have to learn to do when you're working with a tube amp is tune it. So we're on 40 meters. Make sure your band selection is in 40. Make sure you're not in operation. Tune. If you have a tuner in between the antenna and the amp, we're in tune. So now I'm going to Make sure our power is low, we're at 25 watts. I'm gonna check the manual for the base recommendation on seven megahertz, three for load and eight for plate. So we're gonna to tune to eight, we're on three. Then I'm gonna enter a mode like CW and I'm gonna hold down the key with the operator switch on. And then we're gonna tune, adjust the plate for maximum power output on the needle here. So we're going to let it cool down for a second after I keyed up just to give you an example. So I'm going to come here. And there we go. There's the dip. So we came up to about seven and a half from the eight from the standard. And we're going to let it cool off for about 10 seconds. We're going to do that again. This time we're going to do the load. Okay. So we found we backed off from three. We're down to two. So now we can go up in power. Let's go to 45. We'll do it again. And we're keeping an eye on our gauge, our meters here to make sure we're not too far in the red. And we're tuning the plate for maximum power output. And then we do it again with the load. Let it sit for 10 seconds or so in between transmitting. And now we're going to adjust the load. Okay, we got about 600 watts output, and that's going to be fine for CW. So we're going to stop, and we're going to leave it at that for now. Now, generally, you want to tune up into a dummy load. They sell dummy loads that are strong enough to handle the output with the amp. If you're not going to do that, make sure you go to a frequency that's quiet. Listen for a long time. Check that the frequency is not in use, and then when you're done, sign with your call sign. So I've enjoyed my time with the AL811H 
immensely. I would recommend it, and if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you giving the video a thumbs up, particularly if you like this kind of content and you think it would be good if it gets out to more people that may become interested in amateur radio. Amateur radio, I like that. Anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. If you have not already, please consider subscribing. We have a great Facebook and a very active Discord where we try and answer all kinds of questions and keep amateur radio inclusive. Your questions are welcome, and we'll try to answer them in the best way we can. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Oh, AL 811H, I think we have to stop seeing each other. I spend all day in the shack working QSOs and not enough time with my family. You're tearing apart my family.